Hey guys, welcome to a new video and welcome to another episode, more importantly, of the print on demand Shopify series. I'm starting to get really, really excited. I uh, spent some time working on adding some products, as you guys could probably tell, and uh, it's been really a fun experience so far um, because I've done this before, and let's be honest, the more money you make, that's, that's a fun process, so um, not really much to negative to say there. So let's go ahead and give a progress report of how far we've gotten. So I've added a lot of products, as you guys can tell. I've changed uh, the mugs out. I got rid of the mugs, and I added hats instead. I thought the three, I guess you could say, perfect cornerstones of clothing is a hat, a hoodie, and a t-shirt. And um, I've had experience before after uh, I sold my clothing company. So, you know, testing different things, different Shopify themes, different products, and uh, gained a lot of experience in that world. So, it's time to jump right in. And I, by the way, I just want to say, these hats look pretty good when it comes down to uh, Printful. I mean, they're pretty good. And there's some things I want to fix with the theme that I don't like necessarily. Like, I don't like this zoom in effect. Um, some people might like it, some people might not. I personally don't want it, so I'm going to remove that and I'll show you guys how to do that. Uh, but right now, we're just going to uh, tighten some loose ends here for the theme, so or for the store, rather. Uh, for everybody who doesn't know, we're using the Theme POD Shop uh, theme. I'll leave the link to this website, my affiliate link, in the description box down below. It's a really good theme for print on demand. You'll see why. I've actually set a specific video um, where I literally went through the theme for like a half hour just talking about why this theme is good for specifically print on demand. Um, and you guys could go through their website and look at everything they offer and look at the uh, explanation that they have and all that. But, um, you know, I already talked about that in a different video. So let's go ahead and continue with what we're doing here. So the first thing I just want to make sure is after all the work I got done, I want to make sure everything is set correctly within the products. And the way I'm going to do that is if you guys remember the way we organized our collections is that we want the collections to automatically recognize when a product is created based on the title so that it sorts it automatically in the right collection. So here we have shirts, hats. I'm looking for this last word in everything here. So I have to add this. I have to add the word hat here. So I'll just add hat here. And I could, you know, work on the capitalization later. All the small, little, little, tiny, tiny details I can work on towards the end. You know, like if a letter is not capitalized or something like that, I can fix that later. But for now, it's just we're, we're you know, just pushing the pace right now. So once again, I'm adding all the descriptive keywords to each product so I can make sure that the, um, that the products get sorted in the right collections. So we have the signature Irish flag hat here, right? Just, you know, very simple, okay? And once again, I'll look through every product here. We have shirt, hat, hoodie, shirt, hat, uh, hoodie, shirt, hat, hat, hoodie, hat, hoodie, shirt, hoodie, shirt, hoodie, hoodie, uh, hat, hat, hoodie, shirt, shirt. Okay, so there we go. So at this point, the collections should technically have everything in them. You can see here we have six hats, and I could go ahead and just view the hats from here and what I want to do real quick is I just want to let's see if I can set this up here I want to set my sort through a manual sort so uh, if you guys want you can control what's presented first and in order uh, so for me I'm gonna have this is the order of the products that I'm gonna have and I'm gonna keep it that way um, for this for this collection and I can just go ahead and view that collection and I want to just show you guys what I'm saying here so you see how I put this hat first I can move that if I want I can make this you know second to last and I could just refresh this page and there you go it's second to last so that's a little quick little pro tip if you want to organize the order of something a lot of people drive themselves nuts a little bit sometimes trying to figure out how to do that easy setup okay um, so now here we have hats okay I'm gonna hit save here and gonna go back we have hoodies we have shirts okay I want to make sure now that our online store has the correct uh, product section so 
out of the products we don't have that actual menu so we're gonna have to recreate the menu i know we created it in one of the past episodes but we're gonna have to recreate it because we changed some of the products so navigation and you might not have to do this depending on your situation but uh in the product section just gonna simply go over here to the bottom link search for the hats link collections and hats and there we go just simply add it then we look for a hoodie all right collections select the hoodie collection click add and then we look for another collection where we call i believe it was called shirt or shirts uh, collection collections and add so now we have all our product collections but once again i want it to be selected in a drop down so just simply just drag it under the product that you want to be dropped down in or under the link rather that you want to be dropped down in so um you can see here the way i set it up i have hats shirts hoodies just like that perfect okay we have a frequently asked questions we have a contact us our contact us in my opinion is going to be last the news i'm going to rename it and call it a blog instead of news and that's pretty much it so far so that's set up okay like I said, guys, we're just tightening the loose ends so that we can move on to pretty much the marketing phase of this whole thing. So right now, we're going to actually work on the front end today. This is going to be so epic. I'm super excited. So we have collections here. This is referred to as a collection tab grid. Um, it's usually not in a carousel form. It could be in a carousel form. It just depends on what settings you apply and what theme you have. And once again, we are using the theme POD shop from themepodshop.com created by bots and apps. So that's just a little FYI for you guys. So some people may be able to do this depending on what theme you have. Some people may not. If you can't afford the theme for whatever reason, um, I would say try your best to build your store. Take advantage of the three month Shopify trial that we have here. And if you guys don't have access to that trial, click the link in the description. Get yourself signed up to that three-month trial. Take advantage of it because you can make some money, save up, and, and build up from there. Okay? So our first collection, um, if you notice here, we have the collection one, collection two, collection three. These are buttons. Okay? Um, and consumers can sift through collections. This is actually, I used to call this a product cabinet. The reason why this is, imagine if you're in your kitchen and you're looking through your cabinets. Well, you're probably going to put like you have a medicine cabinet, you have a seasoning cabinet, you have this cabinet, that cabinet. Well, you're going to add products to each cabinet and consumers can sift through each cabinet seeing different collections of products. The main function of this, uh, uh, this concept here is that consumers can sift through majority of the products of all of your store, get a concept of what's being sold without having to scroll down below the fold. What does below the fold mean? It just simply means anything that you see here without scrolling down, that means above the fold. Anything below the fold is simply below with scrolling down. Now, why does that matter, you say? Or why does that matter, you ask? Well, most conversion attractions happen or interest accumulations happen above the fold. This is another huge pro tip. Why do you think a lot of stores like Nike, Under Armour, all these big stores have huge banners on their screen? Because they know that attraction, most attraction is accumulated or attention is accumulated interest accumulated above the fold. So above the fold is, is crucially important to understand these small concepts. And like I said, guys, this is the difference between a beginner tutorial and a completely full tutorial from somebody who's done it versus somebody who's theorizing about it, all right? So let's go ahead and select here. So we have our first uh, collection here, which is our shirts. And make sure you click save on that. Then we have our second collection here. And notice how it doesn't show up when I actually select it. It's because it's buried right here. Collection number one will show by default, okay? So change collection for collection number two. And we could show our hats, for example. And once again, notice how it doesn't show up, right? And collection number three, We'll hit change is our hoodies. Now, when I say notice how it doesn't show up, there's nothing wrong with this theme. It's that you have to click the actual button to make it work. That's why it's called a tabbed collection or a collection tab. So if I was to preview this in uh, a browser, like just normally like so, there is this collection, which is collection one, right? Which if I click on it, nothing changes. But then I have collection number two. Right. And the ch and the hat and, you know, the hats up here. Then I have collection number three. Now, of course, I don't want to call it collection one, two and three. I'm going to call it what it simply is. So collection one 
our shirts, right? And we're going to hit save on that. And collection two are or is hats, right? Just like that. And notice how everything is uniform in the theme. Uh, things are capitalized when they need to be capitalized. Everything looks clean, right? It's differentiated. And finally, hoodies and hit save. Now, we can have we can add a button that says show all, but this show all button refers to the products in the actual uh, grid. So for each specific collection. So for example, okay, here we have this shirts collection. Are there more shirts than just simply these four? Absolutely there are. And we can add that show all button to the shirts collection. So I could just simply click this and it will show more, right? And a little FYI for you guys, a little concept of understanding is once again, understand that this is above the fold. So you want to understand, you want to kind of think of strategically, what's the best option for you? Everybody's a little bit different, right? Because your products are going to, what's going to come out of it is going to be a little bit different. In my case, since I know I'm going to be adding more products in the future, I'll click show more. I'll add this little show more section. I could choose not to add it. It doesn't really matter. But for now, we'll, we'll keep it the way it is. At, at the end of the day, we're not testing conversion optimization yet, and we're not doing A-B tests sim yet, but we will eventually. But anyways, so there are a few things that you can control with this collection tab. This is the beautiful thing about this theme that you can't really do in other themes. First thing you could do is you could actually choose how many products you want to show. So if I want to show instead of four, I can show three as the max. I can do that. But notice here there's a difference between products per row and max count products. Okay. So if I set my max count products to 10, well, now it's going to show 10 total products. But if you notice, it's showing four per row. You see the difference there? And it also takes into consideration based on how many products you have. I, in my case, I don't have any more than eight shirts. So I don't want to show all of them right away, right? I, don't, I just don't want to do that. So I'm going to decrease that number, you know, back to four again, right? And let's say I wanted to have these images become larger. Well, then what I could do is just select three and I'll only show three per row, right? But in my case, I'll stick to four and keep everything uniform. And I want this feature the same throughout all my different products. Now, if there's a collection where you only have two products or something like that, then put it there. Now, there's something also crucially important that you want to understand. You don't want to overload the section here with so many collections. That would be counterintuitive because what that's going to do is that is going to increase friction. Remember, one of if you remember that video that we did, um, and I really should just pull it up, honestly, just so that everybody can be aware of it. Uh, go to youtube.com, type in autopilot passive income. And this is where we went over the conversion factors uh, where we were talking about the theme. But really, we're just giving a lesson on conversion optimization. Um, if you look here, let's go to, I believe it was episode number five. Episode number five. It's titled... One second, sorry. It's titled The Best Print on Man Shopify Theme. But really, we went in depth into conversion optimization, why things certain matter, why things matter. And um, everything has a, a purpose. It's very, very important to understand. You know, mar everything, everything has a purpose. Um, and, and this section right here, when you click on the total section, like this, where the drop down is, you click on this whole entire thing. If you navigate, you can see what you can control and what you, sh you know, essentially everything that you can change in this little aspect. Um, so everything by default is pretty good. I mean, you don't need to really play with it, but we're just going to leave it the way it is. Okay. So grid builder. Oh, and back to what I was saying. So you don't want to add too many collections here. It would be counterintuitive. You want to nav, you want to understand how to segment your store. So I'll give you an example. Back when I used to, uh, sell white labeled clothing, meaning like I used to order them from overseas, I used to, you know, customize the, the fabric, customize this, customize that, whatever. Um, there were two main categories of clothing. It was men's and women's. So in my store, in, in that case, I would have had only two collection tabs here, men's and women's. There was really a whole bunch of different collections. There was like about eight or ten, right? Because you have the men's tops, you have the hoodies, the shirts, you have the shorts, you have the hats, you have compression gear, you have a whole lot of stuff. Then you have women's, you know, leggings, sports bras, tops, uh, jackets, you have a whole bunch of different things. 
So in that store, I wouldn't just sit there and list out every single collection. That would be, like I said, counterintuitive. Causes more friction. You want to decrease friction. Okay? Okay, so this section here, I actually think it would be really, really cool to, and this is the grid builder section here, because there's going to be multiple grid builder sections, and you can always add more if you want. But this selection here of products, I'm going to add the hats. So I'm going to go over here, change this uh, fruits collection, which, by the way, was the default from the um, the demo that they have. And if you guys want to see the demo, they have it you know, sitting around here somewhere. Um, uh, let's go here and select hats. So now I have my hats here. And this is really cool, too, because now I get to show uh, some of my products now. From, from what the demo showed, the ideal way would to do this, and I could just click on this demo, and let me see what the password is, POD Theme Pro. I forgot what the password was, but um, this is their demo here. Let's see. If you look here, there is, and I, I actually picked up on this, they have a large image here in a banner form that correlates with the products here on the right. So we're going to do the exact same thing. We have our products on the right. And the banner has to correlate. Now, in the next episode, we'll come back with the banner and show it off, and it'll be cool. But uh, for now, we'll just leave it just like this, okay? So th this right here has to have an image that has to make sense. In our case, we have a bunch of hats. Uh, I'll get a mock-up of a model with the hat on. It'll be great, okay? The next thing, we have this grid builder section here where it's icon, text, um, headline, and text. I'm going to leave this where it is right now because these are part of your I don't want to say competitive advantages I don't want to say that they make you different but in the same notion this is what your store is about I would call them the cornerstones right why would somebody purchase from you what makes you special what makes you different what makes you uh, a better business to buy than the local Amazon than the local uh, you know I don't know whatever Walmart whatever wherever they're purchasing from right um, you got to think about these things. You got to think of what makes you different. Do you offer certain sales, certain discounts, certain whatever? You can change this information here. Um, it's at your peril, at your choice. So we'll get back to that later. But here is the uh, split banners. So split banners are crucial, important, just like the section here at the top. Now, split banners, if you if you see here, this is what we call a break in focus. So this section here is a break in focus. Genuinely or generally when somebody comes to your website and and you see this if you've tested Hundreds if not thousands of websites over time is that the most interest in a website tends to be once again above the fold But directly after that it is a, a below the break Right and, and what the break is is this section right here because it's a break in the focus here we're selling products, we're selling products, we're selling products, and then break. We're telling people what our business is about. So where is the where does the interest reset? Right below the break. So this section is right below the break, which is crucially important for it to be a split banner. Now, what is a split banner? Once again, if you remember what we did, what we spoke about earlier, what did we say the purpose of, or what is the the in, what is the goal when a customer comes to your website? They have to be aware of what is being sold. From a categorical base now why is that important it is because consumers subconsciously know what they already want believe it or not okay and you might say well how how is that possible well think about how they come to your website in the first place they either see an ad they see an Instagram post they see a, a, a Pinterest post they see a Twitter post they get notified by a friend they have a, already a genuine interest or else they wouldn't be on your website to begin with so what this is, is this is segmenting categorization once again. But with a split banner, you have to segment in either two or three main categories. It just so happens in my circumstance, in my situation, my main categories are what? They are hats, shirts, and hoodies. So for me, it's not going to be a two-base split banner. It's going to be three split banner. Now, there's, you shouldn't have anything more than three, and you shouldn't have anything less than two. Okay, for for the split banner concept, because then it wouldn't be a split banner. It just wouldn't, you know, if you have one banner, that's just a banner. That's not a split banner. So that's a little uh, thing to keep in mind. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to add a third banner here. So just like this, we're going to add a third banner. 
But you notice here the banner is right here. Now we could do a masonry style banner. Masonry means, um, you know, not it's like not in order. Their sizes are random. It's different. It's kind of basically like, you know, bricks. Imagine if you see somebody laying some bricks. But we're not going to do that. We're going to keep it clean, concise, and optimal. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to control the size of each of these banners. And I understand if you've never used Shopify before, if you've never done this before, it could be a little um, complicated, but don't worry. So the first thing we're going to do is going to select the banner. Now we're going to control the size. Currently, the column size is 6 out of 12. We don't want that. We need it to be... We need to have three of these. So really, what the what would the size be? If the maximum is 12, that means each one is 4. So we need this to be 4 by 12. Okay? 4 out of 12. We're going to do the same thing for the second banner. we got to have it 4 out of 12. Now, if you could see here, all three banners fit. But there's one slight problem. This third banner looks different than this banner and this banner. Well, that's not really a problem. It's just certain details that are in the... I guess you could say the scope of the actual banner. So we're going to work on that. There's no problem. Once we get our images sorted, and we're not going to use these images, we're going to get some good images of models using the products. We're going to put them on the banners and we're going to rename the products. But first we're going to rename the actual banners so that once we get the images, we slap the images on there. It's going to look beautiful. Okay. So here uh, it says shop all cases. We're not selling cases. We are selling hats, hoodies, and shirts. So I'm going to locate where it says shop all cases, and I'm just going to type in shirts, just like that, okay? And it should say shirts. Now I'm going to go to the second banner. I'm going to delete this, and I'm going to write hoodies, just like that, and hit save. And then I'm going to go over here to the next banner, and I'm going to type in it, where, I'm going to, where it says button text, and I'm going to type in hats. Now once again, if you have two main categories, you don't need to have three banners. You could only use two and you'll be, you know, good to go. Okay. The okay. So the next thing we have is this default product section. Now this product section, what you want to do is you want to give the attention to the catalog that has have had the least attention. That's basically the best section here. Or, you know, you can also do a mix product collection. So the way a mixed product collection works is you go back and you create a collection that has a mix of all different types of products. And you can label this mix like new products, products that are on sale, new arrivals. You could name it whatever you want. And I'll just show you how to do this real quick. So if we go over here to collections, we can create a new collection called new arrivals. Okay. And then what we do is we make the uh, collection type a manual collection type and we hit save. Now, the reason why it has to be a manual collection type is because we're going to manually select what products we want to give attention to, okay? So, let's say I want to add this uh, cork. Uh, actually, let's go with Dublin, Ireland hat. Uh, let's go with the Lisburn, uh, the hoodie. Let's go with the Wexford hoodie. And we'll go with the, let's see what we can go with here. Uh, let's see. Blarney uh, Ireland shirt. Okay, so here we have four products and, and we'll just leave it at that for now and we'll go back here And now we have a collection created called new arrivals and we're gonna go over here to customize and We're gonna scroll down and We're gonna go to this collection section Okay, and then we'll select the home page where it says home page and we're going to change the collection. The reason why it says home page right now is because it's on default home page collection. I'm changing that. Change collection and I'm selecting new arrivals here. Okay. So now it's actually showing my new arrival products that I selected, right? So the Dublin hoodie, the Wexford hoodie, uh, excuse me, the Dublin hat, the Wexford hoodie, all this stuff, right? But now what I want to do is it says all cases for 1750. I need to change that text because that's, you know, demo text here. So I'm going to change that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go here and I'm going to rename this whole section here. So go here to the title. It says all cases for 1750. And we're going to type in uh, checkout or not even checkout. Let's say new arrivals. I don't even need to complicate it. And it says latest product and new collections. 
and I'll just leave it the way it is, right? Just like that, okay? And we'll hit save. Now, the section under here is the blogs. The blogs are not going to be taken care of until we actually manually add some blogs, but in order to add some blogs, we need some content. That will be in a later episode. But if you look here, we have over 50%, maybe even more, of our website done. All we have to do is add an image here, image here, image here, image here, and then finally some blocks, and that's it. This whole front page is finished. Now, if you look at it, let's go ahead and go to the preview, or we can even preview it through here. We have even our products set up here. So this is what we call a product collection page, okay? So this is a product collection page, also known as a collection list. But the thing is, when sometimes when you say collection list, some people think it's a list of products within a collection. And no, you don't want to get that confused because they're not the same thing, right? So you have the collection list here, which shows simply the different collections with the amount of products there are. Then you have a collections page with a default collection or a regular collection. So, for example, I can select here a hoodies collection. It will show all the different hoodies I have. I can show here the, the shirts collection with all the different shirts. So I could do these things. Now, if you look here, we have a section called sidebar. This sidebar is found on any product grid page. So the page has to be a product grid page, just like the collections page, just like the product pages, all this kind of stuff. And what we have here is this sidebar. And on this sidebar, you can add a whole bunch of different things. Now, what I plan to do is I have a collection section here and since we're doing print on demand, we don't need to sort by size at all. So there, there are different things you could sort by. You could sort by price, size, etc. You select what you sort by. Now, the way sorting works is that you, you have to go into the sort. So like, let's say it's color and you add the tag of the color here and then you go to the product tags and you add that same keyword in the tags. So for example, if this was an orange shirt, I would simply add the word orange in the list of tags along with all the other colors. And then I would go to this actual product, locate it in my product in the back end. Let's say, for example, it was this one. And then I would type in the word orange in the tags here. And if you guys remember, we actually spoke about this in one of the earlier lessons, if you remember. Okay. So once that's all taken care of, then you will have essentially created your filters in my case where you have a print on demand store all the products are the same color pretty much and even if they were different colors i still wouldn't allow sorting by color it would be uh it would kind of defeat the purpose so what am i going to do i'm going to keep things relatively simple if i was a clothing company where i was manufacturing particular products like nike or under armor in that case i would select by color but in my case, we're not doing that. This is a very simple store. Okay. So here we have collections. I under collections, I want to add, let's just say a bunch of products that I want to select. So a product grid and I could select on the certain products. So once again, these are products that I want to give more attention to. So I can give attention to the new arrival section. And I, instead of calling it product grid, I just call it new arrivals just like this so you can see here now we have a full fully loaded sidebar and it's better if we view it in the shirts but because you can see here it says shirts with the number of shirts we can sort by whatever we want as consumers but then on the left side we see a collection section and then a new arrival section right and here we have the list of actual collections beautiful setup here it looks really really good and uh, you can see here it says sort by best selling sort by price price sort by alphabetical whatever and the theme is inherently doing that for us which the, not all themes do this once again so it just depends on what theme you have and um by the way not all premium themes are created equal by the way um the reason why i even wanted to mention that and why that's important is because a lot of people think that um you know all premium themes do the same thing and that's not the case so this theme will offer different features than another theme or another theme. Uh, another theme that I really, really like, and I've mentioned this before, is Debutify. Debutify is one of my favorite themes. The only problem is for a beginner, it's just not feasible. The price is not feasible. You look at the amount of features that you need and how much you're going to have to spend monthly, right? $79 a month, $149 a month. Most people can't afford that, right? So this is separate from the Shopify fee. This is just simply for the look and feel. 
Uh, a lot of people can't afford that. Everybody's different, though. So that's why I recommend the uh, POD uh, theme. It, it's It has basically like 90% or 95% of, of all the features that actually matter um, for conversion optimization that Debutify has. And it's literally a fraction of the price. I think it's total price is 149 per license at least for now i know the price is going to go up once they have more customers but 149 per license and um to beautify is you know you could end up spending that on a monthly basis or half of that on a monthly basis so uh it's it's a huge different you know ball game here's a one-time payment one is monthly you can't really compare okay um so that's set up now we have a footer if you see here this footer uh, it says POD Theme Pro. It's the name of the actual company, this company here uh, that produces the theme. But I don't want that. I want it to be the name of my business. So when I select this footer, if you look here on the left, it's going to highlight this footer section, and it's going to say social media. It's going to say copyright. I'm going to click on this copyright button. And if you look here on the box, it's going to show the text on the copyright. So it says copyright 2022, POD Theme, all rights reserved. I'm going to change POD Theme Pro here to whatever my business is. So I'll call it Irish clothing or Irish cities or, you know, whatever I decide. I'm actually going to change the name because I know in the future I'm not, I'm going to have more than just Irish products. I'm going to have Scottish products, products from Wales, product from, you know, all these different places. So for me, I'll just leave it Irish cities for now. I, I don't know for sure what I'm going to call it. And if you don't know for sure, that's perfectly fine. We'll come back to it in the uh, future. So now what we want to do, guys, to help out the growth of our store and let certain things fall into place is we need to actually have this store functioning so that we can start piecing the last few puzzle pieces together. So what I need to do is I need to actually go to the back end and I need to uh, set up payment collection. All right. So we need to go to our settings and what we need to do and set up our uh, complete account setup. We're going to have to do this here by accepting some payments, some payment methods. So what you want to do is you want to click on this green button that says complete account setup here in the payment section. And we're simply going to submit our details so we can actually take in some money when somebody buys something. So I'm going to pause my screen, fill out the information, and, uh, you know, we'll get right back to it. And so now what we need to do is... You could already see, I'm pretty sure if you guys see here, there's a pop-up that is popping up here in the bottom left-hand corner uh, every now and then, like right here. Someone purchased a Dublin, Ireland hat. Um, if you want to set that up, it's really, really simple. Just go to your pop-up section on the bottom. Uh, make all your settings, so select the collection that you actually want the products to show. So in my case, um, I think I'll set up my homepage collection. For all my products to show uh, in the little pop-up. At first, I was going to do my hats, and then I was like, you know what? Let's go with the homepage. So we show all the different products. And um, <clears throat> I'll have a little scene real quick of how you can create a homepage uh, collection. And once you do that, uh, just go over here and just choose the amount of time you want the, the orders to be in. So for me, I'm going to leave it to... Uh, well, it was left at the default. I'm going to increase it just, uh, I'm going to leave it from 5 to 23 minutes. So five from, from 5 to 23 minutes is the max amount of, uh, max and minimum amount of time per order. And uh, we have from Melbourne, Australia, we have London, we have New York, we have Washington. I could add a few other places. Uh, in my case, uh, all the orders should be coming in from, well, uh, the place that, customers are really coming through so for example um if i want to add cork ireland uh i don't even have to add actually that uh location but i will do it anyway i can add dublin here and you just you know separate them from with this little uh line here so you have the country where they're coming from etc and uh it's really cool because it all works great. So let's just go ahead and save that. And uh, now we have our different locations. If I were you, I, I, you know, you wouldn't need to really edit the countries. But then again, everybody has their own choices, what you want to do. So um, here uh, we have 
a few different things we can work on. You can see, there we go. Somebody 11 minutes ago from Dublin purchased our, uh, you know, Ireland shirt. Okay. So the, the cookies section, I'm not going to add this now, uh, because I just simply don't have to, you know, I'm not, yeah, I'm not going to clog up my website right now with just like that little cookies pop up. I never liked it anyway, but, um, you could see here, we've done a lot today, right? We, we've, created different products, different pages, different pop-ups. Um, if you need help, guys, with anything on this Shopify thing, leave it in the comments down below. We're really working through this uh, series uh, pretty well. So um, I'll talk to you guys later. Thank you guys for watching, and peace out. Bye.